Good evening, folks, or good morning, or good day, good weekend for you. Hope you're having a nice one. Uh, hi to everyone who is live in the room. Leave me a comment, let me know where you're chiming in from and where you are in the world, what time of day it is, what you're having to drink. I am in Hong Kong now. It is 7 a.m., so I'm having my cup of joe. Nice uh, little link there. Someone just mentioned Biden in the chat. I just woke up to see that AP has uh, announced the election results in Biden's favor. Having said that, I don't want this show to become a politics show, so um, I'm happy to take any questions we get today. I will touch on you know my move and what's going on. But I don't want to go too deep on all of that because I'm going to do a dedicated Q&A video next week and I'll call out for questions for that one. So feel free to chat and interact as much as you like, as we always do. But just know I'm going to try and keep this on the photo review theme that we normally have rather than it just being about my move or what's going on in politics because I think we've all seen enough politics coverage. Um, so we've got people in from Caribbean, Paris, UK, Monkey Island, Netherlands. Uh, nice. So hopefully we can find a time moving forward to do these kind of shows that works for everyone. I know even at this time it is getting kind of late in Europe. Uh, for next week, I'm going to keep it again on the Saturday rather than the Friday. I'll probably keep it at this exact same time. And uh, because I am on day two or three, I've lost track already, of a 14-day quarantine after arriving in Hong Kong, I'm housebound, so I thought a nice theme could be indoor photography. So that could be you shooting out the window or shooting a model indoors or shooting macro stuff or whatever it is, just that you're shot indoors. And that's certainly something that I guess everyone has been doing more of this year than usual. So uh, please uh, send those through to the normal place at mattgranger.com forward slash live. Uh, hi, Juan, John, Larry, 101, Dennis, Photorescent, Rob. Thanks to everyone who is joining us live in the on YouTube right now. It's good to see you all there. Oh, reminder that the Maleficent Art Nude body paint photo shoot that I did with Steph has been up on launch sale. We launched it just before Halloween, and that sale ends today. So if you want to grab that, you can check it out at, uh, I will pop a link into the chat here for you. Um, it's really great. It is 82 minutes. It's 4K and we take you start to finish the entire photo shooting process. Just note that is uh, not suitable for work and it's full nude. It's actually the first fully nude course that Steph and I have done together. We've done the implied nude portraiture course before that. Um, Mr. V I can't say your name, very Ampari. Um, in Finland, nice to see you there. And that looks like a Japanese character, I don't know, but thumbs up to you too, sir. Um, so let's take a look at some of the photos we had entered. Now I do actually have a little something um, to, oh, Yobo's in the room too, howdy. Um, I do have a little something just to foreshadow a bit of where I am and all of that. So this is the luggage that I brought with me. Uh, we've shipped other stuff, but this is what I carried with me. I also had a shoulder bag, which was a little bit huge and heavy as well. Um, doesn't look like that much, and it's certainly less than I came over to the States with because we shipped things this time. But still, uh, each of those luggage, the black one and the orange one, are 32 kilos a piece. And then I don't know if it was by design or by chance, but the bottom one, that's the gigantic and really high quality box that my Mac Pro comes in. I guess it must be by coincidence because it depends what you put in it, how much it's going to weigh, what cards and stuff. But mine, with all of the packaging, came out almost exactly to 32 kilos. So not my first choice to ship it, but uh, to put it on the plane in that way, but. I can go into that in the Q&A video if people are interested, having looked at lots of different options, 
it was the best way to go. So with my carry-on, I was probably still carrying a good 110 or 20 kilograms of luggage with me. It was quite a bit. Uh, this was my flight over. There was, so that's economy. You can see a couple of heads here and there. Um, and that's what I woke up to see the news this morning. And that's as much of the politics that I plan to touch on today. So let's take a look at the images we have entered. Um, just jumping back out, because I only have one small monitor here right now. Um, so hi, Phil. Hi, Nompak. Um, Nompak saying, how much was it? was all that to ship. Um, I didn't ship that. That's what I took with me on the plane. So I, I was flying economy. You see how empty the flight was. So it wasn't um, any value in upgrading the ticket. Um, so that gave me two 23 kilo bags. So I had to pay excess luggage to get them up to 32. And then I added a third bag, which also had to be overweight to give it three 32 uh, kilo bags. Um, and Cathay, you know, they, I have to say, Cathay did such an amazing job. They've been so helpful through this whole process, especially given what the staff are going through with so many layoffs and furloughs. Um, they weren't being tough on hand carried or they didn't even check any ones that I saw. Um, I guess they know people aren't just flying for shits and giggles now. It must be for something important, especially going from America, which is considered a high risk country to Hong Kong. Um, yeah, I guess they know that people must be relocating or whatever, so they weren't being really tough about that, which was good. So let's take a look then at our images. So Charles Young shuddered as life struggles on. So I don't know where you are in the world, but I saw a lot of this around New York as well. So fingers crossed in the days, weeks and months to come throughout America, all of those boards won't be needed and there won't be uh, riots alongside protests and that kind of thing. Uh, I really like the position of the rider, love the shadows on the wood. I think what makes the shot for me is this guy up in this window and it looks like maybe you already have done a little bit of work to try and bring it up, but I think maybe you could bring it up slightly more so that it you know, really jumps out at people without having to search the frame for it. Um, let's see. This one from David Stevens. Oh my goodness, what a cutie. So keep in mind, the fact that the theme is uh, 2020 doesn't mean it has to be death and destruction and political turmoil. Uh, for me, there was a lot of great things that came out of 2020. Being here is one of them. Um, so spending more time with your kids at home, that's absolutely, you know, really anything that you took this year would qualify for this week's theme anyway. Um, it's a cute portrait. Um, it does look a little bit like she's in kitty jail, <laughs> shooting through the lines like that. Maybe she's in a timeout and she's wearing the inmate, uh, clothing as well. So what did she do? I'm assuming it's a girl. Um... It's a very cute, simple portrait, no distractions. I like it. Um, Chris. So I think he said this was like his last kind of outing before he before the lockdown. I'm not sure what uh, editing technique you've applied here, but I feel like you've tried to uh, make this person more sharp but then the background looks like it's been scratched with a piece of steel wool or something. Um, it's got a really odd look to it. Um, I don't love the, that edit. In terms of the shot itself, you know, we talk about the tourist view a lot when you're out shooting wildlife. You don't want the shot of the backside of the elephant. You want the face that walks towards you rather than walking away. I think it's kind of the same here. Unless number 15 is some superstar and that has significance, I would much rather see one of the two players' faces rather than seeing their back. Here we go. This is what we're talking about. If you're on safari, this shot from Eric, um, 
you will get a lot of butts of animals, but generally their face is the interesting one, unless it's a peacock or something. Um, the framing, I think, is a little off. You've lost their feet, and I'm not sure what the edit is on this one either. It's quite contrasty, but I have to say, I'm just getting through my jet lag. I'm using a junkie monitor right now, and it's not calibrated yet, so it could be that what I'm seeing is not quite what is in your files. I have to acknowledge that. Um, so I think he said this was the last trip he took in this year. So it's got some good potential, but maybe work on the framing a little bit. I'll look at one more and then we'll jump back and see what questions we have. Um, oh, and I just saw a question jump up from one care of Dale. Will Steph be joining? I'm so sorry I spaced out and didn't mention that at the start. Everyone, please uh, send your love to Steph. She was going to be here. Uh, I don't want to share her personal things, but she had a family situation pop up and she couldn't join us today. But yes, I'm still intending to have her come on for live shows when it's possible. So thinking of you, matey, I hope everything's okay. And I will. I was chatting to her before the show. I'll chat to her again afterwards as well. So thanks for asking, Dale. And yes, I hope to ha keep having Steph on and I've got more content filmed with her and Joe to get my way through to share with you guys as well. So um, thanks for asking. Now this one from James Sanders. Now he mentioned in the email that this was his first attempt at taking product photos and that the company really loved it and he ended up getting paid for it and now he's doing more of this, I think, around sunglasses. So that's really cool and congratulations. Um, if this were to run in a magazine or to be used in a print publication, make sure you get different variations on it. They may want to really make sure that they have the whole glasses, you know, the second arm there is slightly cut off. Um, and I would even have ones where you put more space to the bottom, to the left, to the right, above, in case they want to put text anywhere around it as an advert, a wider shot and then even bracket by depth of field. So here you've just got the SR, um, and then we see, I guess it's shady rays. We see kind of 80 rays, but then it's already falling out of focus. So they may want somewhere all the face of the glasses is in focus and then just the backgrounds out, that kind of thing. So get lots of variation. So then um, the, the client can't come back and say, oh, it's good, but you have one that has more space here because we wanna put something on the right-hand side, for example, that happens. So let's jump out and take a look at some questions. Um, John Drummond, ask Matt, please tell us what camera system you're switching to and why, thanks. Uh, I haven't decided yet and that's not, that, that'll be something that I'll cover in a dedicated video. But uh, as I said, for bigger questions, then I will do a dedicated Q&A video in the coming week and I'll probably, I'm sure that one's going to be asked, so I'll discuss it in more detail there. Um, James Sanders is in the chat and his profile picture is, of course, wearing sunglasses indoors, no less. So thanks for joining us, James. Um, questions, questions. Dale's question, I see. Okay. Um, Philip Johnson. Because you are now closer to Oz, does that mean you may do projects here while, when visiting family? I sure hope so. Um, as I said in the Leaving USA video, the overriding and main reason that uh, we're relocating is to be closer to family and friends. So my wife's family are in Hong Kong. We have a lot of great friends here. And, you know, around the world, I guess if you looked at... Uh, Australia and Hong Kong, kind of 90, 95% of our friends and family are there. So this is a lot closer. Um, in terms of the, you know, getting back to Australia, it's still not easy. Even though my wife and I are both Australian citizens, you can't just 
book a flight and go in at the moment. It's difficult. So I am really hoping to be able to go back once it's safe and things open up. It's been too long since I saw my family over a year now. Um, Christian Toda, do you use an iPad for photo editing? No, I never got into that. I, I have never used an iPad for editing. Um, digital visual photography, will you be coming to the UK again? All questions that I can't really answer yet, except that yes, I really want to, but it'll again be once that travel opens up. So if you can get the UK to get their freaking act together and stop having huge outbreaks of the virus, then things will accelerate and I'll get over there quicker. I love uh, going to the UK and I also have some great friends over there that I would love to go see as well as work. Um, Peter Eisberg, what's your favorite food in Hong Kong? That is really tough, but I have to thank my wife. I'm in quarantine alone. I can go into that in the next Q&A video perhaps why I'm alone rather than not quarantining with my wife. Um, sweet thing, she already brought me one of my favorite foods. I am not staying just five minutes away from one of my favorite wonton stores, which may sound like wonton, you get them anywhere, but there's a amazing place, maybe like a century old that I come to every time I come to Hong Kong and she got me delivery and dropped it with reception and they brought it up for me. So that's one of my favorites. Um, that's another reason why I'm excited to be here. Actually, my, of, you know, I am a bit of a food lover, a lot of chubby people are, um, but Cantonese food and Japanese food would be two of my absolute favorites. And obviously Cantonese is the native cuisine here. And the Japanese is fantastic because they're so close and you get great access to ingredients here. Um, John Drummond will take this one question, then I'll jump back to photos and we'll come back to more questions and answers later. Um, are you able to schedule any workshops now even for local clients given the you know what? Uh, yes, I have had inquiries about doing one-on-ones, that kind of thing. And I'm actually, I was tossing this up for New York earlier in the year, the potential to do some kind of workshops where we, you know, do temperature checks, get health declarations and hold the workshop outdoors. So then it's not an issue of being in too close quarters, keep the numbers low and then I would just require all of the participants, all of the students and me to wear masks. And if it's a workshop that has models, the models could be without masks, but you know, distanced between each other, not posing multiple people together so that it could become a, a balance because you know, there's when I feel the timing is right and when it, wherever you are in the world is allowing that kind of thing. But there's also, you have to have students who feel comfortable with doing it and with the, the steps that you have in place. And you have to have all of the participants willing to follow the same steps for it to work. So it's gonna take a little bit of finessing, but I look forward to getting back into that side of the business when I'm able. So let's take a look at some more pictures. <laughs> wow. Um, Larry Silverman. Now I did look at this one and it really kind of, um, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. When I first looked at this, I was in such a haze of jet lag. I, it reminds me of, I can't think of who, but the popping bright colors and then what looks to be a stock photo on the computer screen. It, it reminded me like this was a, oh, I can't think of his name now. I'm gonna blame jet lag for everything in the next week. Um, like th this was someone else's photo that had just been entered as a joke. But as I re-looked at it this morning, I thought, so I guess this is the doing virtual doctor's visits and some of the less uh, pleasant things that we have to do with doctors sometimes. Um, it's certainly confronting and pretty hilarious, and I'm guessing that's what you're going for. So well done, Larry. This one from Marshall Lewis. Um, 
I'll be honest, I don't love the editing treatment on it, but I do love everything else about it. The building a brighter future, uh, the flowing skirt, the... I'm not a huge fan of spot saturation, but kind of muted saturation in the background and then the bright popping yellow dress. Um, I would just say maybe be a bit more careful about how you apply rather than just applying a technique everywhere. Um, Cause looking at her legs, they're kind of been washed out and cool and gritty as well, which works for the ground, but not so much for her legs. It doesn't look very healthy, but um, I realize I haven't been giving picks as I go through this, but that's a great one and it would be a pick. I'll just come back and give you all the picks at the end. Matthew Nurbison. Now, I bet this lady is a dancer because you always submit dancers. Um, okay, so the eyes are fantastic. I feel like the crop is a little bit uncomfortable cutting through her bust like that, that either bringing it up so if it's not following her actual body shape that you follow the, the line of her top would already make it that much kind of cleaner. Otherwise, the eye contact here is so strong, you could, you know, basically have it be just a tight headshot now. The previous was better. Uh, but I would probably yeah, bring it up that little bit so it's not just kind of cutting through her like that. Um, Milan, now, what is that? Is he throwing out a net or something? Um, so I don't know what the exact tie to 2020 is, but it was taken in 2020, so that counts. Um, like the position of the guy in the frame, um, it's a nice strong silhouette. Uh, yeah, it, it's a nice graphic shot. There's not a whole lot there that keeps me kind of looking and studying or, you know, in awe. Mozid, now this one, uh, I think he said reminded him of, you know, or it's him or his wife or whoever, uh, dreaming of being back in the mountains, being able to travel. And I certainly feel that. It actually kind of reminds me of the kind of view we often had, not that kind of chair, but the kind of view we had when staying at lodges in Bhutan. And yeah, I miss that too, my friend. Um, I think though, there's a lot of beautiful nature out there. The right-hand side of this frame is not interesting at all, the rock work and the concrete wall, um, that may be taking a step to your left, framing it up more in that direction, and then you could actually have the side of her face be in this gap rather than being hidden, and we, you know, it might be a nicer balance of shot rather than her just kind of almost being central and we're only getting a sense of the view rather than really enjoying it. Nicholas Helm. Okay, um, what a beautiful animal. Um, it looks like a Instagram filter has been put on this, the way it all goes through. I could be wrong, but it really looks like some of the colors have been pushed in saturation and others muted down, like that in the background. Looks to me like you took the blues down um, and you've kind of lifted up the oranges and it looks, to be honest, a bit too much. Um, it is a beautiful animal though, I just, uh, and again, I have to acknowledge I am currently not on a calibrated monitor, unfortunately, but I actually wonder if, um, given that the colors in the previous one didn't really do it for me, if something like this might actually work better. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts. I can't see the, the chat right now. Let me just switch back. Uh, the cow does have a smile. Um, all right, so let's um, jump in and take a look at, let's say two or three more images and then we'll go back to questions. So if you have some questions, please send them through. Let me know what you think of that as a black and white. Um, Peter Eelsberg, that's 
it's kind of a cool shot. Actually, I have a friend who is shooting some yoga images for a studio at the moment. Um, see now, and here in an industrial environment, you get that spot saturation effect without having to do it because it's just against a, a neutral gray background. Um, I do like the, the symmetry here, the central composition works. I'm just not sure, like there's nothing wrong with it, but there's also nothing that really holds me with it. I don't know that any other angle on this move would be better because her face is probably screwed up into a ball holding the pose and you know, what could, no, I was gonna say, you don't wanna shoot the 180 of this because it's not exactly a flattering angle, but there could be a really interesting shot just of her face, arms and shoulders from behind with the, the ground, like with the camera on the ground shooting straight at her face, but then you wouldn't really get a sense of the overall move. So um, I like the shot. I don't, sorry, I don't really have much to contribute to it. I just feel like it, as part of a series of yoga shots, this could work really nicely, but as a standalone, it doesn't quite grab me enough to, to engage. Tom Harvey, now I believe he, uh, is he said he's living in China and he sent this one because he knows I'm in Hong Kong. Could be wrong, but I'm 90% sure that that is a Hong Kong MTR train station with the logos and everything. I can't tell which station. Um, but yes, being that, so if that was, uh, now I'm all confused because of American, the way they write the month and then the day. I don't know if that was it taken in February or October. Uh, but either way, having a station at two in the afternoon that quiet is uncommon. So that already says something about 2020. And Wim Welms. Oh, I think this is our last one that we've had entered. So, wow, we really got through this. I'll jump back out and answer as many questions as you have after this one. Um, so I like the burst of light coming through there. I just don't really get much of a sense of what's going on otherwise. It looks like a DJ maybe. Um, I can see that people are wearing masks and kind of maybe that they're spaced out. Um, I don't really get a strong sense of this being a 2020 kind of shot though. And this is another one. I think sometimes where you've got the, the light burst there and that's kind of yellow and then it's against the greens, that also can sometimes benefit from being done as a black and white. And then you can play with your channel to bring in some different contrast here. See, and that helps us bring up the spotlight on the guy on the stage as well. Just a thought. Okay, um, I will jump out, take a look at some questions and then choose some winners. So, questions. I think Juan has been sending me some. By the way, if you guys saw the vlog I put out about 12 hours ago of my moving to New York, you get to see handsome Juan, who is our moderator here. He was the one who took me on the tour of American culinary delights, which people think he was punking me, but I was genuinely pumped for and excited because I haven't been to those restaurants before. Um, Keith Z, any chance of you doing a Canon 85 mil shootout like you did with the different generations of Nikon 85s? That's a great idea. I would love to do that. Yeah, so once this is all done um, and I'm out of quarantine, that's something I'll look at. Thank you. Um, Colin Cameron, I've been re-watching your seafood channel. Thank you. Um, quite a few are in Hong Kong. Will we see more of that now that you're back? Again, I really hope so. They have some fantastic seafood here. There's actually a couple of my favorite dishes you can kind of only get in Hong Kong easily. Lai Lu Ha and Set Tao Yu. Um, that's a type of, Lai Lu Ha is like the mantis shrimp. We might've seen it in a documentary there, insane. 
they get really huge. It's like a shrimp, but they have these, they kind of look like a praying mantis crossed with a shrimp. And apparently they are, what's the right way of saying it? There's something about the way that they smack their arm. It's so fast that it actually creates kind of like a, a shock wave that can knock out its prey without actually touching it just by like whacking the water near them the pulse will knock them out um, and set tell you is the stonefish which I really love and it's hard to get in a lot of places um, neither of which as far as I know were endangered and I do have a couple of seafood videos also filmed that I need to go through Peter Ilsberg, how did you survive the IHOP breakfast? The IHOP breakfast was honestly good value, delicious, and the quality of the food was good. It's not like fine dining, but I had steak and vegetables, toast and eggs that were, you know, it wasn't crap meat, it was real steak. And then the pancakes, I'm not really a pancake guy, but they were they didn't taste like ridiculously sweet. It was just the gigantic portion. So I would go again. It was the White Castle that was dog shit. Don't go. Ugh. This is too much information, but I had three of those tiny sliders and I think I went to the bathroom six times after that. It was not pleasant. Um, yes, Larry saying very generous to call White Castle a restaurant. Um, okay, I don't see too many other questions. Uh, digital visual. Uh, my name is Ian. Hi, Ian. Tony Northrup said you can't learn photography from watching YouTube. Um, how do you feel that as I think that you can, your opinion? I don't know the context of how and where Tony said that. Um, so my motto for the channel for five or 10 years has been get your gear out. I think that people learn in different ways. And this is something that kind of occurred to me after realizing I am now a multi-generational descendant of educators. My mum's a teacher, my aunts and uncles and grandparents is my, you know, my sister at some time. I was working with um, helping to train adults with disabilities and now I do photography. So people learn in different ways. Some people will learn best by seeing other people do it. Some people learn best from reading a textbook. I, there was a guy at my school who learned to play basketball by reading textbooks. You know, it's not ideal for me at least, but whilst some people are visual and some people are this, that or the other, most people, once you've dipped your toe in and gotten the concepts starting to move around in your head, will solidify the learnings best, in my opinion, by going out and trying it, failing, trying again, figuring out what they did wrong, working through that process of troubleshooting, and then there's a penny drop moment where you're like, oh, if I do this differently, then that changes that and that, and then, oh, that's gonna open up all of these things to me. And when you have that moment, it's kind of gelled and it's like, you earned the information and it's just there. So you don't need to watch any more YouTube videos on it. You understand the way that shutter speed works with ambient light when you're using an off-camera flash. Once you see it and you get it, you've got it. Um, so I would agree that the best way to learn for most people ultimately is to go and shoot it. To say you can't learn photography online, I wouldn't personally say that. There's so many aspects of photography and there's art, there's craft, there's technique, there's diff loads of different techniques that some of them are really technical, some of them are little hacks. Uh, there is equipment and how things work mechanically for some people really helps. And however you get that information, whether it's from a book or from the manual or from a YouTube video or from whatever, um, I think there's, you know, there's information input needed and there's no reason that YouTube can't be a part of that. 
I would say that you can't necessarily just watch a tutorial like the Maleficent one Steph and I did, just watch it and then expect that you can go out the next day and recreate it and get exactly the same results because the space you're shooting in, the lighting balance, you can't just take that I said I'm using a quarter power and copy that, that kind of thing you have to apply real world, you know, application to it. Um, but for example, you will see exactly how we mix the paint and exactly the kind of strokes and techniques we get to get the body paint coverage that will cut out a lot of the trial and error you might have had to do if you didn't see it in video format. So um, I don't think it's that black and white, but taking one line of dialogue out from anything, whether it's from Tony on YouTube or a politician on a debate stage, it's kind of ridiculous. You can't just pull out one line without context. It, it's easy to disagree with it or prove it. Andrew Doherty, do you ever use a light meter? Uh, yes, every one of my cameras has a light meter built in. I use that one. Um, Arez, welcome to Hong Kong, thank you. Um, 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 um. Dennis DeMatt, where do you stand on owning a photo printer or printing everything at a lab? I'm looking at a Canon Pro 100 or something. Um, it really comes down to you how much you're going to print and what you're going to do with it. Um, a lot of people love the process of printing, so that's uh, one aspect to it. I personally don't own one anymore. I had one and I gave it away. Um, and it was a Canon, one of the giant ones that might have been the 10. Um, you know, it does, it can cut you down on costs, but if you have to do 10 proofs to get it all working and looking right, it may end up, excuse me, being cheaper at a lab. And it depends what results you like as well. For some people, it's, I think, a more pronounced difference than even shooting film or digital. An inkjet printer versus a traditional optical printer that uses light and light sensitive paper, there is a difference in the results. Andrew Doherty, no, I don't use a traditional handheld light meter. I use the one in my camera. Um, all right, so let's jump back and take a look at the images that I want to choose out as our winners. Okay, so I think this one was very good. I mean, it's so crass, but Larry's one of the butt is quite hilarious. Um, and this one. Yeah, I think that might be our three. So, oh, and other people had already put their own stars on. I normally take those out. Again, I get to blame everything on jet lag at the moment. So Charles Young, you've just been winning every week lately. Congratulations. Larry Silverman, you're a madman, but it's pretty funny. And Marshall Lewis, just be careful of those edits. Now I will be in touch via email to get you out a prize. Everyone else, the next theme is indoor photography and it's going to be in a week right now at this time of day on a Saturday. Um, so, did we have any other questions? Um, Sean is asking, when does your cat get out of jail? Both cats have been in Hong Kong for 10 days already and there's no quarantine for them. They had to have a series of shots and there was a whole process for that. But they were picked up from the airport via our agent and brought straight to my wife and they've been with her for that time and they're both fine. Thank you for asking. Um, okay, so that might be it. 40 minutes, quick show's a good show, huh? Um, I will share on social media, Instagram and Facebook later today, uh, a post asking for questions for a Ask Matt video that I'll do here during the week. I may stream it live or I may pre-record it, let's see. But if you have more and more in-depth questions about the process or about gear or this, that or the other, 
then please uh, submit them on those pages. It's uh, Facebook forward slash Matt Granger and Instagram underscore Matt Granger. So thank you all for joining us. It is now 7.40 in the morning here. I think I'm gonna make myself another coffee and get ready for my weekly family chat. Thank you to Juan and Yobo in the chat for helping with moderating the comments. And reminder that we have the uh, Maleficent shoot launch sale is ending today. I'll be taking it down uh, probably this time, well, in about 24 hours because I said it would finish on the 8th and for a lot of the world, it's still the 7th. So um, yes, so get involved and don't miss out because it's still like, it's half price or something like that. Um, so cheers and stay tuned. I will have lots more great content coming soon. I just need to wake up a little bit. Ciao. And again, best of luck, Steph. I guess you're not gonna be watching right now, but we're thinking of you. <laughs>